Hey guys, welcome back to Loft Sports. It's Tyler. So, trying something a little different. I'm going to be a little more mobile with the phone now. Um, just get myself on the move. I just think better when I'm not sitting down. So, um, I, we're coming up on the USC game. It's the night before USC. We're off of a bye. And where does this team stand in 2021? Where Where is Notre Dame football this year? Well, we're 5-1, we're and one, which is a lot better than quite a bit of other teams can say. No, we're not where we wanted to be, but we knew coming into the season that this was probably going to be um, a little bit of a rebuild year. We had a new quarterback, Jack Cohn, transfers in from Wisconsin. We lost a lot on the offensive line. We lost a lot on the defensive side of the ball, and we were kind of starting over at the skill positions minus running back. So I, I feel like Notre Dame had a lot of good returning pieces. We had Kyle Hamilton in the defensive secondary. Michael Mayer was a is an NFL first worst late se, uh, early second round pick tight end security blanket. The biggest disappointment for me has been the inconsistency of the quarterback play. The offensive line has played better over the past few games. Um, didn't play great in really any of the games this season. The running game is still non-existent. But overall, I feel like the offensive line is starting to finally come along and mesh together a little bit. So, Jack Cohn has been the biggest disappointment for Notre Dame football, in my opinion, this season. The defense has gotten much better under Marcus Freeman as the season has progressed. We're top 10, I believe, in the country in takeaways. So, I, I think most people would say in an obvious rebuilding year, 5-1 and one with your only loss being to the number 2 or 3 ranked team in the country in Cincinnati is pretty reasonable. Now, the close victory against Toledo... Um, having to pull out these last-second victories against Florida State and Virginia Tech, albeit on the road against Power 5 opponents, I, I did expect a little more from Notre Dame. But if you would have told me in August that we were going to beat Wisconsin as badly as we did and we were our only loss was going to be to Cincinnati, who's, who's probably going to go undefeated, I would have said, you know what, that's a pretty good season. So what can we do the rest of the way to, to call this season a success. And I don't think playoff was really ever fully on the table and part of the discussion. I think a successful season would be, at worst, at this point, going 10-2. and two. Um, I do think there are losable games on the schedule, including USC tomorrow night. I think North Carolina, which I'll actually be in attendance for that game, is absolutely a losable game, um, but also very winnable. Um, including both of those games are. We should throttle Navy. Um, Virginia and Stanford are also very winnable games. Um, so, I mean, we could finish the season 11-1, and one, and I, I think that's reasonable. Now, do I think Notre Dame should get into the playoff? No, I don't think Notre Dame should get into the playoff. Once again, our schedule lets us down. I know year in and year out, we play one of the toughest schedules in college football every year. And in August, we had four top 15 opponents. USC, Carolina, Wisconsin, and Cincinnati were all highly rated in the beginning of the season. Unfortunately for us, those teams have not panned out outside of Cincinnati, who we lost to. So I, I don't think even in 11-1 and one, and even with the chaos that has ensued in the Pac-12 and the ACC, probably not getting into the playoff, there's Cincinnati in the way, there's the possibility of Alabama and Georgia still getting in, there's the possibility of multiple teams from the Big Ten still getting in, and there's Oklahoma, and now Oklahoma State has to be taken serious as a playoff uh, contender as well, being that they're undefeated. So I don't think it's realistic to hope Notre Dame gets into the playoff. I don't really want to get into the playoff and go get crushed by Georgia by 30 points because we're not going to be able to run the ball on a team like that, and Jack Cohn is a statue and can't move. So let's focus on what we know. Notre Dame probably could win all the games on their schedule they won't win going away because that's just not what this team does. They're going to make us sweat out every single minute of every single game on the schedule, probably including Navy, probably including Navy. But to finish 11-1 and one with a, with a one-year transfer bridge quarterback, 
and Jack Cohn would be pretty damn good for Notre Dame. That'd be huge to get to the 10-win season mark uh, for the fifth straight year. We did it in 17, we did it in 18, 19, and of course last year we finished at 10 wins. Now, Notre Dame has not been able to take the next step, which is get a marquee postseason victory. We've beaten LSU a couple times. We blew out Iowa State in the Camping World Bowl a couple years ago and finished 11-2. and But we need to go into the Orange Bowl or a New Year's Six Bowl and beat somebody, an SEC team or a Big Ten team that we're not supposed to beat. Um, a good example this year would maybe beating like Penn State or Iowa. Um which is very doable for Notre Dame, I think, this season. I don't think we're outclassed by any of the teams in the top 10, with the exception of Alabama, Georgia, maybe Ohio State. Um, I do think Notre Dame could play. If they played Oklahoma, I think Notre Dame could keep themselves in the game um, as long as Jack Cohn didn't make a bunch of mistakes. Quarterback situation going forward, I'm still flabbergasted that we're not seeing more of Drew Pine. Every time he's come into a game, he's moved the football for us. So I am surprised that Jet, that Drew Pine has not played more. I thought after the Wisconsin game, when he came in and basically saved the day, I thought he was going to start the next game against Cincinnati. Apparently, Kelly sees something in practice. I'm just a guy with a camera in, in my loft. I don't, I don't have practice access. I don't have any coaching experience in the sport of football. Um, I have some baseball and softball experience, but not in football. So I, I, they must see something at practice every day that makes them feel like Jack Cohn gives them the best chance to win. I know the fan base is very divided on this, and a lot of us want to just hand the keys to Tyler Buckner and or Drew Pine and let this Jack Cohn thing go. But Kelly must really think that Jack Cohn gives us the best chance to win each and every Saturday. I don't really agree based on what we've seen, but again, I'm not at practice every day. I can't sit here and say that he does or he doesn't. Um, maybe he looks really good in practice. Maybe the receivers and the offense respond better when Jack Cohn's in the huddle. In the games, it seems like Buckner gives a brief spark, but his inconsistency throwing the ball is a problem. When Buckner's in the game, team's key on the quarterback and the run game. When Pine is in the game, He's a little undersized, but he's, we've been able to kind of catch teams with the passing game off guard and run the ball, and Pine is mobile enough to run the ball and keep the chains moving, keep the defense off the field, just like in the Wisconsin game. He moved the ball in a couple critical times in that game, got us down and got a touchdown with Kevin Austin after the strip sack fumble and kind of put Wisconsin in a half-to-throw situation. So, you know, at the halfway point of the season – to wrap up the, the the future of the second half, I think eleven and one is doable. I think ten and two should be the goal. If Notre Dame can just get to ten wins, let's see what kind of bowl game we go to. That would be a very successful um, season, in my opinion, for Notre Dame. A very successful season in an obvious rebuild year. Buckner is the future. Hopefully, Pine doesn't transfer. Hopefully, he sticks it out and tries to win the quarterback battle in the spring and next fall. If nothing else. Because I want Notre Dame to have two competable quarterbacks. You look around college football right now, how many backups? Stetson Bennett for the number one team in the country right now in Georgia has come off the bench and saved their season because JT Daniels can't stay healthy. Um, and it's been the case at, at Texas A&M. They beat Alabama with a backup quarterback. So if you have a competent backup, it gives you a chance if your roster is talented enough and your team is coached well enough to, to still be competitive. Now, I don't think Notre Dame could win a national championship with a backup because we haven't been able to win one with a starting quarterback, but at least it keeps the wheels from falling off the bus entirely. So hopefully it starts tomorrow with a, thrumping, a thumping of Southern Cal. We should win this game handily. They fired their coach after week two. They have been bullied and beaten badly by multiple Pac-12 teams. And the Pac-12 is not a good conference this year. Oregon is really the only good team. UCLA is decent but inconsistent. Arizona State, decent but inconsistent. Utah is physical, but they're just not talented enough. So we should win this game comfortably. 
What does that really mean? Notre Dame will come out and score on the first drive like we do every Saturday, and then for two and a half hours we will forget what a football looks like and we will fumble around and the defense will keep us in the game and then we'll fall behind in the second half and Jack Cohn will come in and suddenly look like Joe Montana in the kitchen, uh, the chicken soup game at halftime and lead us down the field for a go-ahead touchdown and we'll probably hang on. I'm thinking 33-27. to 27. That score's been in my head all week don't really know why don't really have a reason for it I hope to God USC doesn't come in here with nobodies and score 27 points on us but you have to remember this is their season they got nothing left to play for I think they're two and three in the Pac-12 they're not winning the South they're not doing anything relevant in their own division or conference so this is their Super Bowl if they can ruin Notre Dame's season and effectively knock us out of the national playoff picture, that would be a salvageable thing for USC to save their season. For us, just keep winning, and we'll see what happens. I'm not worried about the playoff. I just want to make it to a comfortable, uh, a competitive New Year's Six Bowl and look good and competitive in that bowl game. So I'm going to say Notre Dame wins. Control the ball, run the ball, establish a running game. USC is beat up. They're they're on both lines of scrimmage. They're a little bit they're running low on depth. Their recruiting has not been nearly as good under Clay Helton as it should be because they're Southern Cal and they can just walk down the street and find four and five star players. So we should be able to win this game, but we won't win it going away because that's just not the way this team in 2021 has been winning. I'm gonna say Irish 33, USC 27 in another good um, rivalry game, as they always are, usually close in this one. So this is Tyler with Loft Sports signing off. Go Irish.